Welcome to be ready. This is, let me see, yes. Um, this is the Select Committee to Study Barriers to Serving on City Boards and Commission today, September 26, 2022. And this meeting will run from 5.30 to around 7.30. Um, Beth, can you do a roll call? Um, Javier? Here. Jamila? Here. Cynthia? Uh, present. Jana? Present. And Gwen is not here and she's the only other person we're expecting, correct? Uh, can, you, have, can, you have four for quorum. I have a question. Yes. Uh, you said the meeting will go until approximately 7.30. I thought we were going until 6.30. Yeah, no, I, I mean, that's in the agenda. We, we are done when we're done. I just okay. that because it's part of the agenda, but we're done when we're done. Got it. Okay. Because I can only say until about 6.30. That's totally fine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, but I sent also an email stating that please use the link of the body of the agenda and not the link on the, on the thing. And I'm, I just texted her. So, um, cool. So, okay, so uh, so Jenna, Cynthia, and Gwen share documents, and it's it's pretty interesting that are pretty similar to each other. I don't know um, if anybody had in this amount of time, little amount of time that we send it out to take a look to it. Um, let me let me see here. I'm gonna. Um, So I'm gonna Jenna, do you wanna do you wanna share your screen with, with your document and sort of walk us a little bit through it? I'm happy to do that. Um I also I had not very much time, but I did a super kind of quick and dirty 10 minutes before this meeting stepping back from the specific wording of people's questions to look at what are the things. Uh, different topics that people wanted to ask about to try to figure out where their points were all three of us were asking or at least a couple of us were asking because as you said there is a lot of overlap so I thought that might be a useful place yeah. to start so uh, if you can turn your screen and sort of keep doing that exercise with us which I, yeah. just, I think it's important uh, I need I cannot screen share see if I can find something Mm. Okay, try now. I'll make you a. I'll try. Try making you a co-host. Okay, I'm good now. Okay. All right. Okay, you can see this document. Yes. 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 Okay. So let me just quickly run down again. I did this like ten. 10 minutes ago, very, very quickly. Um, but basically I just tried to, th what are the themes of the kinds of things that we were asking about and who had included them? And then I highlighted any that at least two people had asked specifically that. So with initials of who had listed them. So the common points that I found among all three drafts, so mine, and Cynthia's and Gwen's were the following. Um, Interestingly, there were no specific points where all three of us asked exactly the same thing, but lots of two. So um, how did people find out about the committee? What was their experience of the application process? Did they receive training or onboarding? What are the benefits of service? What are the barriers to service? Um, how long have they been serving? Did they plan to continue doing so? And some general demographic questions. Um, and then there were some other uh, other specific questions um, that varied depending on who put the draft together. And then Cynthia had a really interesting list of questions that were specific to chairs. Um, and then, of course, how we frame the questions and the survey and what we're looking for and so forth. But I think that probably makes sense to talk about once we know what kinds of questions we're asking. Perfect. Does this seem right to folks who had time to look through all three lists? 
Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, it's good to see the overlap. Uh, cool. So, so it seems to me, you know, like we would want to ask about these common areas. We'll need to, of course, decide what exactly we're asking and wordsmith them, but uh, there's a lot of overlap here. And so maybe a place to start would be looking at these others, uh, whether we want to include the other questions that only one of us posed. And maybe we each can sort of talk about what we were thinking and coming up with those so the particular questions. So, so the highlighted yellow are the overlapping and the others are not overlapping, but some of them may, you know, the motivation for applying and how appointed. I'll find out how appointed, okay would be important perfect yeah can you move a little bit to your section of it to the to the notes that you you sent oh my actual questions yeah and yeah how let me you... um uh, let me stop sharing for a minute because that's in a different document and cynthia after that i'm gonna ask you sort of the same because in that way me and jamila can have a sense of the approach of you two so with jamila we can actually take both approaches and understanding of those approaches and just fusion together that because i i would be able to meet with jamila to work on the document so this meeting is for me and jamila to understand sort of your your the thought process jenna behind your draft behind um Cynthia's draft and you know god knows when <laughs> when is but anyway so Got if you it. want to go ahead with yours i we would love to sure so um i'm gonna again just sort of gloss over what's up at the top here this intro stuff because i don't think that matters so much uh that's details we can sort out later but i was i was envisioning this for as having three possible audiences um uh, people who applied for a board but never served uh people who um are currently serving or people who previously served and that would include chairs and regular members um so and i sort of structured it accordingly um so these the questions start with thinking about the application process which we've talked some about in terms of we got that nice outline from pam of from the city's side how the applications sort of move through um, city processes and different um, committees and so forth um, but from i was interested to know from the applicants perspective what that experience was like um, as written here sort of how they found out about it why they decided to apply and different aspects of their experience and this list here uh, I was trying to focus on things that I, I felt like um, would be actionable for us. So if, for example, I mean, the first question, it's useful for us to know if everybody says my experience of applying was really negative, but actually there's not a lot we could do with that information because it's not specific enough. But if everybody says, oh, I strongly disagree that the application process was transparent, then that gives us a place to act similarly on efficiency. Similarly, if did I know what to expect? Did I know what people were looking for? If everybody says I had no idea what they were looking for, that might be something that we could you know, try to work on. So across the board, I tried to keep the options concrete enough that once we get back the responses, we might actually be able to do something with them. Um, so my idea was that the survey would potentially have some questions that didn't apply to everybody, because if you applied but never served, you wouldn't actually have anything to say about the experience of serving itself. Um, so these next two questions, questions four and five, would be just for people who've served, um, asking about what they perceive as the benefits of service, and also asking about barriers or challenges to service, because I think we can all agree that even if you have made it through the barriers to applying, there are still barriers once you're actually serving on a board. Um, and those barriers, I think the, I suspect anyway, that the barriers to application 
the barriers for people applying and the barriers for people actually continuing to serve are not identical. Uh, maybe what they perceive the barriers to be won't actually turn out to be the issues in real time. Uh, so I sort of pulled these from recollections of conversations we've had um, and my own experience of some benefits of service as well as barriers. So some of these came from directly from the council order and some of them are um, things we've talked about and other things I've read about a little bit. Uh, and then I ended with some sort of open-ended questions about suggestions for improving the application process and just suggestions for sort of reducing barriers to service overall. Um, I would say that uh, I don't know how likely it is that we might get many respondents who applied but never served. I'm still a little bit unclear on whether we could actually get contact information for anybody who's in that camp. Uh, but I think that that would actually be a really interesting population to hear from if we could find them. Um, so I sort of structured my questions accordingly. But the truth is, even if we never got that um, segment of the population, all of these questions would apply to people who did serve. So um, I think it sort of does double duty either way. Yeah, I, I do think, I mean, I know that members of this select committee have talked to people that are sort of becoming in eternal uh, applicants. I have they have talked to me, they have reached out to me too. So the point is, is you know, this, this is two things. First one, this is really good, Jenna. And I was surprised that a, when, when I reviewed, there was a lot of, a huge overlap, uh, different styles, but a huge overlap with, the, with what Cynthia did too. Mm -hmm. um, oh, when it's coming, <laughs> Cynthia. Habemos quorum, Cynthia. Um, Cool, excellent, and 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 I think that's going to speak out to the ways that we're going to be doing um, outreach, right? Besides just sending to the universe uh, 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 a Google form uh, link. Uh, when we are reviewing the, so what, uh, we just went through what Jenna took a look to the, I mean, explain a little bit her thought process of what she drafted. Okay. And, and, and the idea of that is that going through or now Cynthia and after that you, so me and Jamila have a real sense of your thought process in all this draft. For me and Jamila work together because as the chair and co-chair, we can do, work together on the document, separate it to this to bring to the table uh, to, to sort of to, to come out with a final version. Cynthia, do you, feel, do you feel comfortable sharing your document? Yeah, I, I think um, if I, um, just in the interest of time, Javier, yes. uh, can I just make a, I mean, I'll, I'll put it up there, but I just wanted to make some general comments, sure. if I could, because um, uh, Jenna, I think you did a fantastic job. Um, and I think that point about the audience of those who have applied, but that but did not get a position, um, that might be a question that we ask court tomorrow night. Yep. the mayor's assistant, you know, do you keep the applications? Because if if he does or they do, um, then we've got something to go on. But whether or not they're, they're willing to release those or not is another question. Um, but I think that's a really good point. And then, um, yeah, I'm an advocate, I'm, you know, and I this is not a deal breaker for me of, of um, talking to board chairs a little bit separately because it's just been my experience that a board chair has some ideas, um, but they're often not tapped for those ideas. And so a board member just appears and they're, they're like, okay, welcome and embrace, et cetera. And I'm just curious to see, and maybe it's not appropriate for a board chair to have input, um, but I would find it, uh, personally, I would find it useful. So. This is my, my big conundrum and query about how do these people, how do we all get on? <laughs> you know, what what is it? Who do we know? And I'm not saying there's some type of um, nefarious thing going on, but it just helps to unravel for me how people get on the boards. And um, particularly if we have a, a goal of diversity, and if that's not expressed somewhere, 
like if a, a board chair says, says, I really want to have a more diverse board. Um, and, I, and I know we talk about that and that's always an initiative, but until we really put a pin in it and really see that it's, it's, it's a need and, and beyond talk, um, it's, I just feel pretty strongly about that. I mean, and I'm on the board of health and I really wish we had um, more representation of what our community looks like. So um, does that make sense? Just to some, some comments, but um, I, can, I can try to pop this up in the meantime, um, but you, you tell me folks, unless we wanna have a discussion about this or I know I'm sort of a placeholder for a quorum, <laughs> so. Well, not anymore. Oh, okay, okay. Not anymore, with Gwen. Not, with, not anymore. Uh, with, okay, no, no, no. Thank you, Gwen. No, but um, I just put that out there. I don't know how you all feel about um, an initiative of having board chairs be in a separate kind of category of separate I, questions. I, my mind is set on that, and we will. I, I'm going to be really honest. Okay. So I'm wondering whether. Uh, I think you're right that, and and not least, board chairs have put in the service in order to, and the time and the commitment to become a chair. And so I also feel more comfortable asking them for, asking them to fill out a longer survey than, a, uh, you know, just a, a regular member. So I'm wondering whether we might consider, because I think it would, I, I really liked and thought your questions for chairs were very interesting. And I would love to get chair's perspective on some of these other more general questions as well. So I'm wondering if we might to try to avoid us having uh, two or three different surveys just for current board members. If we have one that branches according to, you know, I applied but never served, I currently or previously served, I currently or previously was chair of a board or something, we can figure out exactly how to branch it so that we're getting everything from the chairs a little bit less from members and a little bit less from just applicants with one survey. Uh, I think the whole, I'm gonna, you're a co-host right now, so you should be able to. Yeah, I, I just did it. <clears throat> so you can keep talking while I try to figure this out. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so, um, yeah, I do agree with Cynthia. They are, I don't know if that's the, there is going to be a need for more than one form. I do think that there are going to be conversations needed to happen. Um, and we have been talking about that. Um, and I think that, I don't know, I would be against one more, one, more than one form of, uh, you know, more than one version of a form, just one. And the other sort of, encourage the members to do the outreach that needs to be done to, you know, to really uh, create a, Cynthia, do you want me to share it and you can just you do it that? Yeah, I'm t I can't seem to pull up my document, so not sure what's going on. Okay. Thank you. It looks You're so like quick. <laughs> okay, Beth just said that I am also co-host. Because yeah. I was pretty sure that you were going to share your document in a few minutes. Okay. Okay. And that will enable you to do that. Okay, Cynthia, go ahead. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, kind of self-explanatory, but I separated out board chair questions um, and um, trying to get at some of those things that I was just talking about. Um, I think my conundrum is um, when, during the um, questions for committee members, how do we want the responses? I like the way you did it, Jenna. Um, I was trying to make it like, yeah, sometimes, no, never kind of response. And I don't know what's more valuable. I, I wasn't sure how we were gonna collate. Um, so that's something that we probably are gonna have to think about as well. Um, but, Those are uh, some really good questions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are all. Those are all really good questions, and they're. I mean, they. They seem to be open ended. I. Some of them, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think you could do like a never, always, sometimes thing for them. 
Yeah. Yeah, you know, Jamila, I was even thinking about um, board chairs, that's the conversation, right? Contacting them in a conversation. Um, and so I wasn't really um, pinning down the yes, no, maybe, never kind yeah, of scale. I see. Yeah, you could. Have, that's a good one. I but mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, certainly one of the things that, I'm, that I saw and I thought when uh, taking a look to the different version is that it's going to have to be sort of a hybrid form, right? Yeah. And which is gonna it's it's gonna have what what Jenna brought to the table, which is you know, um, sort of a uh, sort of set up answers so that people can just select. Uh, and here we have a huge amount of material for narrative and open ended questions. Um, yeah. I think both, I mean, you know, the, this is what was one of the things we were talking with Jamila the other, the, like two days ago, that um, the idea is to combine these two things. I, you know, in the way how you guys are explaining it, makes total sense to have a hybrid form. The only concern that I have is not to have something too long and too wordy that would uh turn off somebody from filling it out that's the only thing but that's something that when 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 the problems when the problem comes up we can we can think about it and it, uh, thanks javier and i also was wondering if we're going to be asking for i think in one i can't remember jen if it was yours jenna or glenn um somewhere I, the demographic information yeah um what were we think do we want i mean i think it's really important i'm just wondering how we capture it um, other than asking for it, right? <laughs> so the way how we thought about doing it was that as soon as people are done with this one, had the option to go to a, like that tiny, uh, tiny optional form, okay. which is, is talking about, uh, we talk about age range, we talk about renter versus owner, um, you know, uh, children or not, uh, age range, in that kind of demographic, because that one is something that we want in a, in a section of the form that it's, I feel has to be separated. So it's not, it's not attached to this. So there is no correlation. Mm. Um, and it's, it's, that information is gonna be information that is quantifiable by the form. It's, it's really easy to pull out the numbers. I'm gonna check out now because I have to go to another meeting, but this all sounds great. So I'm sure we'll come up with something really good. This Thank you all. Thank you, Sin Thanks, Cynthia. Cynthia. Thank you so much, Cynthia. When do you have your uh, your form handy? If um, not, I, if not, I can share it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can bring that up. Nice glasses, by the way. Oh, thanks. Am I, I might be in the wrong account. I, thought, uh, I may be in the wrong meeting. I might be in the wrong browser, but I'm not. So hang on one second. I'm pretty sure I did. Okay, in the, in, in the meantime, Jamila, what do you think? I think that I think that the questions are are great. I think that I I'm unsure how we're going to get it all in one form and all in a like concise form that's not too long or wordy. Um, but I think we can combine some things as well. Yeah. Okay. This is mine. Cool. Uh, do you want to do you want to walk us a little bit about your your thought process and? Well, I was just thinking, like, what are the most initially? It was, I mean, really straightforward. Like, what's the most imperative thing? You know, so a select committee. Um, the the committee seeks information in order to study barriers to citizens serving on boards, commissions, and committees in the city of Northampton. Your responses will aid in the city of Northampton finding ways 
for citizens to serve better or have more interest by information that we gather at this time. Thank you. So, you know, how long have you served? A, a, a year or less, less than five years, 10 years or less, less than 20 years, more than 20 years. Um, you know, how did you become chair? Um, so, you know, I tried to think of all, all possible ways that somebody might become a chair and I don't know if I got them all in here, right? You know, whether they were appointed, they were voted into the position by citizens, they were nominated by a council person, referred by a friend, uh, a governor's appointee, um, voted into position by other members of the board commissioning committee, mm -hmm. you know, what their interest is, how you attend special types of training, um, can you describe the training, um, so let's see what else. Have you considered other boards? Um, I guess when I asked that one, I was thinking like, are there times when someone feels locked into something and maybe they'd like to move around different departments and try different things? Have they had an opportunity to do that? Um, have they considered that? Mm -hmm. um, and then the generation thing. Okay, it's, um, listen, I was raised to tell people, it's very rude to ask them their age. Okay. Okay, so I was like, I could do it by generation, but I realized I took a very American approach here because somebody who might have come from, you know, someplace else might not find the humor in this. So I didn't know if this was appropriate, but I figured it was kind of funny anyway and made it more interesting because who likes to take these things anyway? And then ethnically, I didn't know all of what to put, but you know, it's good to get details. You know, I guess that's kind of a census question, but, and then just if there's anything they'd like to see changed. Can I see the part where it says, um, like what are the motivations? Like kind of, um, um, so yeah that, that, yeah, that right there. That. What interests you in serving in your position? It gives me something to do in my extra time or retirement. I am inspired to create change in my community. It looks good on my resume. I enjoy being a team player and enjoy the camaraderie. I have a vested interest in the matters of the board on which I serve. Yeah, I, I like that. I like, I mean, I like you know, it. We could we could add we could take away from that you know but I maybe like um, I'm inspired to create change in my community is the same as I have a vested interest in the matters of the board you know so there's a difference there because we're interested in serving on on the board for for and with the board or we want to create change in the community so it's kind of like is it inward or more outward you know what is the interest so I guess that's kind of what I was thinking there are two things that got my attention the first one is the question about the training okay. um the training have you attended yeah so I'm thinking about sort of the confirmation of the charter review board. I'm thinking about the confirmation of the um, redistricting. Uh, and those two are pretty important commissions that uh, anybody here heard about those commissions being created time ago or sooner or I, I didn't hear it. And redistricting, it's incredibly important. And the other one too, and 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 the charter review commission is, is incredibly important. Right. And, and I think that so that, that question about the training and the capacity, and if you are being brought to serve as a just a regular neighbor, 
are you being supported to be able to do it? And, you know, I, I don't want to think that people are being brought because, you know, you're right. going gonna to avoid in my way. You're going to pass what I want. I feel that, how, how do we do that, right? Because you, you have all the boards that are technical in nature, mm-hmm. that besides doing the job within their meeting and rubber stamp, whatever the, the, the department chair or whatever comes in from, it's presenting and based on information that they have the expertise of the more members, which is really specific, they say yay or nay, right? Mm-hmm. But, but when, and, and that's, that's and, but when you're bringing community members to commissions that are extremely specific, uh, the, the, the redistricting, it's, it's a thing, it's an issue, right? Right. So um, I'm sort of, I like that and I would like to see how we can add that because I, we're talking about support in Demila. We talk, uh, uh, in, in who was the, the one that wrote it? Cynthia or Jenna about mentoring? Mentoring, yeah. I, I, think that, that I think that that goes sort of hand to hand with that, right? Right, the, so, so maybe, you know, this would be like, have you attended special types of training in your position as the chair of the board committee commission? And maybe a next question could be, have you received any other type of support in your position? Yeah. Um, I, I think that's important. I think that's important. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the other, it's the kind of appointments that you wrote, which is, uh, and in this, I have to say that you and others had been sort of uh, educating me about this, right? Yes. Which is in relation to the Northampton House of Authority and, and sort of the confirmation of who's sitting there, right? Yeah. It's also an overlap of are you going to just see people and give them support or, and, you know, because, you know, they are the community right. living in those facilities um, because they are going to be seated next to people who are being appointed by state authorities. Right. And that's, that certainly are positions that require. And I think we, we talk a little bit with Jim about this, that there the, the may be positions that require support. And I think, uh, you know, exploring, sort of a professional development. <laughs> uh, right. It would be interesting because in that way, you know, we may, based on the question that Jana drafted and Cynthia drafted, we may find that people find like, well, I don't feel prepared to serve or I don't feel that I'm going to be supported or I don't feel that it, it could be anything that an explicit support of and professional development would fix, right? Right, right. Yeah. Any, any other comment, Jenna? So um, I think that's a really interesting um, question. I, uh, but a bunch of that question and a couple of others here, I think shouldn't be specific to chairs, um, unless I am mistaken, I think on all boards, regardless of how you got onto the commission to become a chair or a vice chair, you have to be elected in by your fellow members. So I know that you can be appointed or, uh, elected in different capacities, but I don't think that you can become chair except by a uh, collective vote. So we might just want to slightly rephrase that to ask about how you were, how you came to be on the committee, not how you came to become chair. Yeah. yeah oh, no, okay. Yeah. 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 I agree. I mean, that's obviously that's the process. And, and also, and that's a good cut because I remember when we were talking about maybe we're talking with a chair and the chair says, you know what, you need to talk to this member of my committee. That person has something to say. So in the, yeah, so I, I, I agree with Jenna that um, would be a good idea to, to make it sort of about the, 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 the entire membership of the commission rather than the chair. Okay, it says, how did you become chair of your board committee or commission? I become a member. Oh, it should say, is this for the member questions? Yeah, yeah, because that one would, as Jenna said, would and, and would um, would uh, you know would be a general one that can be answered if that if you're a chair or just a member. Oh, okay. So this is a questionnaire. I I, I just did the questionnaire from the approach of a chairperson. That's absolutely fine. Um, but um, but 
so but if if we're going to change it i can just simply change the type the title chairperson you know slash member questionnaire oops is that what you're saying no in the how did you become a chair of your board committee commission i would change it for rather than chair as how you're going a member okay so in that way it can be answered by either a chair you. or just a regular member okay yeah but no but yes we as we said we, we we stated last meeting this is for people who have served right in any capacity form uh of shape okay um excellent and when you need to read your emails yeah jenna so it does sound to me like there is still a little bit of a um some variations on a theme in terms of who exactly the survey is for that will need to be reconciled so in particular is this the right form for somebody who applied but never served to fill out or will that be captured in some other audience and um just reconfirming that it is, it, I, it, well, let me rephrase that. I think everybody's clear that this should be for both current chairs and for current or past members yep. of commissions and possibly with different sets of questions for each. So I think one of the pending questions is whether or not this also captures people who applied but did not serve. Yeah, that's correct. And my, I'm, ad, I have been advocating to do that separate. Mostly, yeah. mostly because of the the problem of length immediately comes with the people who have served, is ser are serving as a chair of member or have served. We already have the sort of how lengthy or not that can become. If we add another layer of somebody who has tried to serve or has never served and doesn't know anything because haven't heard anything and you know doesn't know how to access information we would make it quite long and i think that would affect the willingness of people to fill it well I, actually i'm I, well in the way that i was envisioning it whether or not we uh leave on um sorry let me figure out how to say this clearly the way that I was envisioning it, if we in this same survey was were to capture people who applied but didn't serve, that wouldn't entail adding extra questions. They would just get a much shorter subset of the questions. But the questions we would want to ask them about the application process, I think I would still want to ask other members and chairs about. So whether or not we include the applicants, uh, it doesn't actually shorten the list of questions for uh, current or past members. Yeah, but having, I'm just going to throw out, having 15 fields with question, multiple show questions in hybrid with narrative question. And if I have never served from those 15 only applied to me sort of two at the bottom or whatever you want to put it. I, I don't, I personally don't find it user friendly. I do prefer to have it as a separate step. Um, I mean, that, that would be my comment about it, but you know, I mean, God knows, maybe with, when, with Jamila, we start sort of cutting, pasting, moving around, we come out like, huh, this was not long. So we can just put everything together. I don't know. Well, but, do, do you mean user-friendly to put it together or user-friendly for somebody who'd actually be filling it out? Because for if we branch it- User-friendly for somebody who would, uh, fill it up so if we set up branching it can start with a question that says something like you know check whichever one applies i applied to join a committee but i never served and or i'm a current or past member and if you check i applied but never served we can set it up so they only get a subset of the question so they don't have to see the other 15 which i think from a user experience would make it really easy yeah. that's just a question of how it's structured on the back end yeah and that was my idea which i voiced last meeting right that and you mentioned you know if 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 you answer no to number two go to number five 
sort of right. space is the same model, right? And I, yeah. right? But that's the reason what I'm saying. Right now, as you can see, it's a ton of good questions and a ton of good approaches. Um, I, we need to sit with Jamila to see how we're going to put it all together. Mm -hmm. In my head right now, I it's a cluster. If, 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 we, if, we, if we meet with Jamila and all of this and that cluster become really not a cluster, but we can sort of do it in a, in a user friendly, easy to navigate for people. And we can sort of have the three target audiences. That would be great. Right, Jamila? Yeah, that would be good if we could get it all. And, and the people who I would like it to be branched out. So the people who didn't get a chance to serve can fill it out their part. And then you'll have a part for the people who did serve or have served in the past. And then you'll have a part for the chair people. Perfect. Um, cool. Technologically, I would not know how to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how to do that technologically. I, I, I have a sense of how to do it. Okay. You know, in Googling, how do you, it's really useful. That's true. <laughs> so I think we're almost done. For tomorrow, um, as Cynthia said, we're going to have uh, a visitor. Uh, from the mayor's office, who is the one who handles the applications, right? Tonight, I'm gonna send sort of a little, like, like a little tiny three-liner about what this person does, so we can think about questions. But where, uh, what I would say is, take a look to the document. Probably you already did, but just take a look to the document that we got from Pam and Laura and Beth about how uh, the process works who does what and how they do it. That document is, is in the same email when we get when we got the all the contact information from the chairs and the boards, right? Um, and I think most of the information you're gonna be able to get it from there. If you have any questions, just feel free to um, send me, shoot me an email. Okay. Um, yeah, I have here. So, his job is to accept applications, give them to the mayor, schedule interviews, uh, contact the city council when the mayor has a candidate, and when a candidate is moved to the appointments committee. Right, that's that's. Okay, say that again. Sorry. So, can you hear me well? Oh yeah, I can hear you fine. I just I got distracted for a second. So. Um, the job description of the, uh, this person is his job is to accept the applications, give them to the mayor, schedule interviews, uh, talk to this, uh, communicate with the city council when the mayor has a candidate, and move the application to the appointments committee. Because if you remember, all the appointments go from the mayor to be approved, Robertson by the Right. Uh, appointments committee who send this with a recommendation to to the full city council mm -hmm. um so that's going to be interesting and uh we're going to move him to sort of because of time we're going to move him to the top of the, the agenda tomorrow um is there any question Not about that, but about the form. Would you like me to send you that document with the common questions? Yes. Okay. That would be useful. And so is your is your thought that you and Jamila are going to meet, come up with a new draft of the form, sort of compiling everybody's ideas and then present that back to the main board? Yes. Okay. Yeah, first. And um and Jamila, we can talk about um, meeting. Okay. Perfect. Um, cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. So I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Um, oh. For a second. I'll second. 
So Jamila motion to turn when second. Uh, Beth. Javier, would you like to adjourn? Yep. Jamila? Yes. Jana? Yes. When? Yes. We are adjourned. Excellent. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.